Hello everyone and welcome to a new module release. This is uh, Planetary Transmissions module. And its purpose is to put out DXFs so that you can design a planetary transmission of a particular type, a split ring planetary transmission. And um, to get there, let me go back. When you start SPUR, you'll be on the normal SPUR design screen. SPUR was released a couple of months ago and it's for designing uh, gears and putting collars and lock rings and such on them. But on the screen now, we've added a new button, Create Planetary. And when we go to Planetary, we'll be given a screen uh, with this dialog on it, asking you for information on what your parameters are. Uh, first parameter is Backlash. This is in millimeters. Uh, be warned, on the version on the web, it may temporarily say Backlash in percent, but it is not in percent. This is in actual millimeters. I use a Bamboo Labs P1S, and uh, 0.1 millimeters works great for me. Uh, performance will, of course, depend on your 3D printer. Uh, after that, we can put a desired output diameter of our transmission. It's defaulting to 60. I was building several small planetaries when I was doing this. And you can select a desired ratio. Uh, at currently, this one is set to 50 to 1. Uh, minimum number of teeth for any of the gears involved. And the minimum and maximum number of planets. You can also set a min module because this process works by varying the module to find various uh, module mixes that will give you the ratios that you're asking for. After that, you need only press a button, find new gear sets, and it will find, in this case, it found nine. And if you use the drop down, you can select the uh, mixtures that you like the best. You'll find the ratio and they will vary throughout the range that you've got set above. Um, here, for example, we've got exactly a ratio of 50 to 1. So if we select that, you can see the gears change to reflect it. Uh, in order to explain how this works, I think it's probably best to explain how the uh, planetary gear works first, just as a refresh for anyone who's not up on them. So here we have three checkboxes. We can turn off the pitch lines and stage zero or stage one. I'm going to turn off stage one and here we have our uh, bottom planetary. And if I hit simulate, you can see we can uh, watch it uh, rotate. Now, a planetary is usually described by one of two terms, fixed ring or fixed carrier. In this case, the bottom planetary is a fixed ring. It's part of the case. It's never going to move. So when the sun turns, the carrier or the planets must move around at a ratio computed by the ratio of the various gears. Uh, if it was fixed carrier, then the planetaries would be locked in place and then the ring must move on its own. Uh, that's all pretty standard stuff for a planetary. But let's look at what happens when we attach a second planetary to the first one. Here we have the top ring. Picture that stage zero, the red, is on the bottom. Stage one is at the top. But we connect certain things together. The planets, if you look at these planets, you can see the red and green, the top and the bottom, are perfectly in sync. They're actually printed as one piece where the lower half is one gear and the upper half is another. The sun gears, you can see, are slowly going out of sync. They are not connected together. In fact, when I make it, I print the green gear, the top sun gear, as a little wedge and I drop it in between the planets. They move the top sun gear. Its only purpose is to provide support under torque situations where the green gears here would bend inward. We want to have some free floating support for them. And that seems to work great. Now, in this case, it is we do not fix the ring. In the upper stage, let me turn off stage zero, this ring is free to move. But the carriers are not uh, locked. They're also free to move, but they're constrained. They're constrained by the bottom stage. So these carriers are forced to move at a particular speed. Uh, the ring is then free to rotate if there's any mismatch between the two stages, and that's exactly where, it, where we get our high ratio from. If I turn on stage zero and we look just at these outer rings, you can see that they're out of sync. The green ring is moving slowly, and that's what's moving currently at a ratio of 50 to 1. For every 50 rotations of this bottom sun gear,
this green outer ring will rotate once. So it's a 50 to 1 transmission. And if I speed it up, you can see it better. The planets stay in sync because they're one piece. The sun gear on the bottom is the drive. The sun gear on the top simply goes to whatever position the planets tell it to go to. But the upper ring, it is forced at high torque to move uh, one rotation for every 50 of the sun gear. And that's basically how a split ring transmission works. Now it's worth noting here that the pressure angle shown over here on the uh, legend to the right um, shows some numbers which are not normally used. This is because the pressure angle is optimized for the number of teeth that you have on the gear. <clears throat> normally pressure angles jump in increments 14 and a half, 20, 25, etc. But you can actually optimize them to the actual tooth count, and we've done that here to try to get as good a fit as possible. Uh, second thing, uh, the backlash in millimeters works uh, by decreasing the width of the teeth of the internal gears and increasing the width of the tooth for the ring gear in order to get a good fit. And you should check, uh, pressing shift and your mouse will move the uh, image, by the way. You should check under simulation that you're getting a fairly decent uh, mesh without too much overlap. And it all looks pretty good. I found in practice these work very well. Um, I'll show you an example now. So this is an ESP32 connected up to an M5 stack uh, little gimbal motor. This motor is uh, fed serial commands by I square C and the ESP32 is just a bridge to my USB so I can send it serial commands. Uh, it's quite a cool motor. Uh, it's very tiny, it's drawing about 40 milliamps at the moment and it's turning at 50 to 1. Here's the motor turning on its own. It has a little programmable LED on it and an LCD screen that shows you its status. And you can see here uh, the gears printed, uh, the planetary gears printed as single items. And I've got a thrust bearing and a couple of other things going on. So that's the type of planetaries that the program will put out DXFs for. Um, you'll have to load them into something like Fusion 360 to design um, your own planetary to fit whatever motor you're trying to fit it to. When you import your drawing, uh, the DXF output from the module into Fusion 360, select multiple layer and it will put the bottom stage on one drawing and uh, the top stage on another drawing. And from there you can simply extrude them uh, straight up into whatever mechanism you decide to design. Hope you enjoyed it. Have fun.